So you want to know the story of Stiff Little Fingers? We'll tell you the story. It started back in the 70s. Remember that? Punk rock and all that. Sex Pistols singing about anarchy in the UK. Clash singing London's burning. We grew up in Belfast through the Troubles. We lived it. This is our story. Hello. We were specifically a Northern Ireland band singing Northern Ireland songs. I think the message is, is universal. It came from the attitude and the soul, that's what it's about. They can play to 2,000 people in a night, and every one of them know every word of every song. And 50% of them doubtless will be tattooed with the band's name somewhere on them. music that stands up and if the music still stands up and the band are still good live and still believe in it, people will go and see them. Quite a few, you know, 20, 30 year olds there who are um, seeing where, I guess, bands like Green Day and, and so on, um, by their own admission, get their influences from. For my money, you know, they're working class heroes. The songs actually mean something. It's more than just ego and selling records. in my eyes. I think I was 11 years old when the, the trouble started in Belfast um, and to be honest at the time it just felt like a game that people played on the street. We're talking about really the height of the troubles, you know, the, the really dark days, early 70s. And I particularly remember during the summer holidays. Uh, sitting on the curbside with a, a local newspaper spread out. It was because it had photographs of like people petrol bombing crowds and throwing stones and stuff like that. You went to school in your own local area, you mixed with the people in your own local area and people really didn't cross what I suppose you would call the sectarian divide. I mean this was happening probably about a mile away from where I lived at the time and you don't realise until that mile gets eaten up that it's not a game and it's not a bundle of laughs. Try to break down the imaginary wall And if you could be bothered Well then my friends you fall Some guys uh, ended up dead unfortunately some guys ended up in organisations, in the UDA, in the UVF or whatever. Some guys, strangely up, uh, strangely ended up in the police. So <laughs> out of our friends, half seemed to be in an organisation and half seemed to be in the police, fighting them.
barricades around everything. And it's hard for people nowadays to imagine it, but having said that, that's just the way it was at the time. I had no idea of the the, the cultural and the, the social significance of what was happening until I was much older. It's as simple as this. When the jam got big, do you remember in England you had red, white and blue jam shoes? In Northern Ireland you could buy red, white and blue jam shoes and you could buy green, white and gold jam shoes. That's how polarised the community was. I always felt that we were in, a, in quite a, a backwater, you know, uh, culturally. But there were no bands that came to Belfast. Um, at the time they were, they literally thought that they would be flying into a Beirut situation. Um, and fair to say, you know, uh, musicians have been targeted there. When we first went over, the Miami show band, some kind of show band, had been shot that week, you know, they'd been stopped in a car and uh, uh, hauled out of the car and they'd all got shot on the roadside. <laughs> I was a shit footballer. I was reasonably intelligent, but not that smart. I turned out to be a half decent guitar player. Well, the story began at school um, at the boys' model up Valley Hill, North Belfast. I was forever like dragging schoolmates into, let's form a band, you know, you can play the bass, let's be in a band, you know. None of us had played instruments. I was asked to play drums, never hit a drum in my life. Um, so it really all kicked off.